Okay. So this is the neophyte test, Moorish American competency test. The brother Noble Humble Bay compiled this, finally prepared. Um, number one, what makes it apparent that you are a nation and have a nationality without proclaiming prima facie? And that's a question. Flag. Flag. Yes. Definition of America. Okay. I put uh I put, I put all Moorish peoples are born sovereign. That was my answer. Why? Why is that? Why are they sovereign though? Consequently and and blood, right? Yeah, the lineage. The lineage is tied to the forefathers and the foremothers of the land. And U.S. is not 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 a nationality. Okay. Yeah, their sovereignty. Anybody else? What makes it? I, a I actually had to look up what uh what prima facie was. It's my first time hearing the term. Uh, At first sight. You know what it means now? Yeah, I have a law dictionary uh, at first sight on first appearance. On the space? Yep. Okay. So what, what makes it apparent that you are a nation and have a nationality without proclaiming pro, prima facie? Should it be custom? The flag? Yeah, your flag. Okay. All right. And just to add to what everybody put, bloodline, <clears throat> all humans have nationalities and are from a nation of the human family. Just to add on to what everybody else said. So uh, I'm gonna move on to number two. What year was the Morris Science Temple of America founded? 1925. 1928. 1928. Uh, uh. So, so three. Okay. Number three. What, what year what was the answer? 1928. 1928. 1928. Right. Okay, so everybody said all the numbers. I'm like, nobody said what it was. It's 28. All right. Number three. What year was the old Canaanite temple founded? And where? 1913. 1913 in New Jersey. New Jersey. New York. Yeah, everybody should know that. Yeah. 1913, Newark, New Jersey. All right. Number four. What is North America also known as? It's a multiple answer question. Uh, uh, Mexico. Morocco. North North Morocco. Al Morocco. Al Morocco. El Madrid, Alaska. Yeah. <laughs> Americana. Cato <laughs> Island. Temple of the Moon and Sun. The farthest west and uh uh, milk and honey. <laughs> the land of Amaru. 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 Yeah. Amaru. Yeah. All right. We got Northwest of Maxim. We got Maghreb Al Aqsa. Got no one. Nobody said North Al Marak, but uh, Amaru. I said Al Marak. I didn't say North Al Marak, but I did say Al Marak. Okay. Okay. So yeah, North Al Marak. Um, yeah, everybody's yeah. pretty much right. <clears throat> um, number five. What was Noble Ju Ali's official Moorish appellation? El Ha Sharif Abdul Ali. Sheikh Sharif Abdul Ali. Yeah, Sheikh Sheikh Sharif Abdul Ali. Sheikh Sharif Abdul Ali. 
that kid in his official capacity. I am the Sheik. Uh, so Sheik Sharif Abdul Ali. Salam. Number six. What year was the Kingdom of Morocco founded? And why Martin. is it important? Martin, 1956. 1956. So you got 1956 for the Kingdom of Morocco being founded. Okay. Now, why is that important? <clears throat> Distinguishes uh, it, it the from the from the empire. Yeah, that's what I put. Um, it distinguishes what because it was breaking up on my end. It distinguishes from the empire. Of, it distinguishes the kingdom from the empire. Yeah. Right. yeah. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. Not only that. Okay. Oh my bad. Go ahead. Go ahead. Islam sheet, yeah. Not only that, but um, another thing to, to remember that was important was that U.S. relinquished their um, jurisdiction to council also in 1956. That's why that's important, not just to know why. They established it in 1956, but they have no right to council. Only we do. So, so the same year that the Kingdom of Morocco got established was the same year that Eisenhower, Eisenhower a CEO of the United States Corporation at the time relinquished jurisdiction in Morocco. Correct. And um, okay. the, the whole AA22141 thing, you know, that that uh, co corresponds to um, Title 22, Section 2, uh, right? Chapter, chapter, two, chapter 2, Section 141. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and, and that's going to direct you to what I just said as far as Eisenhower, Eisenhower relinquishing jurisdiction Morocco, <laughs> uh, amongst other things is, is that why I say repeal that's, that's what it mean by repeal or relinquish right but not from our end from their end <laughs> you know okay. but before you get to the repeal I'm talking about the language that's in the actual you know uh, title 22 it, it says relinquish yeah, yeah, I was I was reading it and it and it had um it was like August first, nineteen fifty six uh, repeal. Um, that's what it um uh, said in the um as far as the, the bill itself. So that's I was just trying to clarify. No, but I'm saying in the meat and potatoes of it, did you see that we're relinquished? Are you saying it got substituted with repeal? Yeah, when you do a basic search on it, well, when I did the basic search on it yesterday, it said repeal. Okay. okay I got, um, maybe on the back end, I'll, I'll go into the um, official documents so y'all can see it. It's an original form, um, Title 22. Uh, but let's go to the next, next one. Is, where are we at? Number eight, right? Number seven. Um, Number seven. What are the five Moorish Aboriginal titles? El, Bay, Day, Al, Ali. Day. Okay. Okay. Say, somebody's like you. Somebody like somebody getting electrocuted or something. Somebody got a tech. Somebody got a techno box. Hey, for a while now. All right. Went away. All right, so um, number eight. What year was the Treaty of Peace and Friendship between Morocco and the United States established? And what year was it revised? <clears throat> Why is that? 1786 and 1830. 1786 and 1787. So they got uh, 50 years from the 1786. Oh. The treaty was 1786 revised in, in 1787. Mm -hmm. And then it was another treaty in 1836. Yeah. Um, this question is, you know, asking about just strictly the first one and when it was revised and why is that important, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. 
Right. So why was that important, y'all? I think it proves that we was like established first as a, you know what I'm saying? Oh, we already had like an established government. They protected the ships that they were sending, so they weren't they weren't mm-hmm. getting attacked by the more. Yeah, somebody kind of low. Somebody said protect the ship. They yeah, was protecting because they were just uh, they were sending ships over there, and they were getting uh, destroyed and pillaged. And they like, helped them travel unmolested on the seas. Well, uh, I think every fifty years the contract uh, they had, you know, is supposed to be uh, the treaty ends every fifty years. Right, it's renewed. Right. Yeah, it's renewed. And then the one, um, the latest one, uh, it's um, I guess until we, it's not. We don't have. They don't. They didn't ever renew that one. Yeah, it's perpetual until we get in power. Until we, like, abandon it right yeah and if in order for us to abandon it both parties will have to come together but you know that's not relinquish their jurisdiction so that it never happened right but the reason why that was so important too to remember why it was revised in 1836 is because speaking from experience the 1787 treaty is not enforceable now that we all know that and we agree with that that's a fact that the 1787 is not enforceable. So don't put it on your wrist. Don't speak about it. Invoke the 1836 version because behind closed doors, this is what they're looking for. You know, little pinpoints. Mm. Yeah, we should, we should try to get that certified copy from the Library of Congress, that 1836 one. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, um, I might have it in my emails. I got to check to where we can just print it up. Okay. Yeah, because I have the other one. Okay. Um, okay, so, so question number nine, what are all the five-fifths of a human being? So we heard three-fifths, we heard, we've heard that language. We know, we know, spirit, spirit, soul, body, nationality, and creed. Spirit, soul, Flesh and blood. Body, nationality, and creed. Spirit, soul, body, nationality, and creed. Anybody else? Flesh and blood. Yeah, those are five. Spirit, soul, nationality, creed, and uh, body. Okay. Yeah, flesh and blood, spirit, soul, nationality, divine creed, yep. All right. Number also, two. for number... Oh, my bad, she... Oh, go ahead. For number one, too, um, I meant to mention uh, flag or nationality card. My oh, bad. Okay. So any... Uh... Any any signal basically, right? Uh, signal would be the flag, um, and if you look at Article Four, it speaks on that. What a treaty! Um, all right. So number ten. What do L's do? What do bays do? And what is your Aboriginal title and duty? So first question. We do the first question right now. What do L's do? They the creator. Law, law givers, executioners, those who are well studied, light of wisdom, scholars and students alike, force and power. The penitentiary forces. Right of the law. Uh, yep. Executive lawmaker, creator, means president. God or power. Congress. Okay. So what do bays do? Landlords. Governors. Well, Force the law. Force the law. Obey the law. Obey the law. Executive branch. Obey the law. The so called tribes, the L was uh, the L was Cherokee. And then the Bay was Choctaw. Bay <laughs> mean ruler of the landlord or enforcer or officer. Governor. Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah governor. Yeah. Yep. That was the major one. Yep. Okay. Is your Aboriginal title and duty? I'm a bay. I'm an enforcer, law enforcer, governor. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm, a bay. I'm a landlord. I'm an L. I'm a, I'm a navigating L. I'm a law enforcer. I'm a bay too. Bay, uplift fallen humanity. Yes. Yeah. It's no law. 
Good answer. Good answer. Yep. Okay. Um. Now, before I move forward, we have Sarah Abrams. Let's just get clarification who you are. I'm not quite sure. It, it's me. I was changing to uh, iPad. So. Oh, okay, okay. That's my girl. That's my girl. I just switched the name on it. Oh, okay, okay. It's not. It's yeah, not. It's not. All right. So number 11, <clears throat> what article within the Universal Declaration of Human Rights secures your pre-existing right to a nationality and its protection? 15. That's 15. I think it's uh, 11. 15. Article 15. Yep, it's article, yep, article 15. Article 15. Oh yeah, number 10, 15? Of the universal oh, yeah, yeah. that's right. Every person has a right to nationality, and no one still, yeah, for sure. Yep. All right, number 12. What article within the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People secures your pre existing right to a nationality as an Aboriginal Indigenous being? Six, five, and six. That's the one I think it's 11. Article six. Five, two. Anybody else? Three. I said six. I think, uh, Article six. Article six of the United Nations Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous People, Article six. Secures your pre existing right to a nationality. Number 13, who gives you unalienable rights? And give some examples of what those birthrights are. I said Allah. Allah gives us that life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the human creator. Yeah. That's heavy. That's heavy, Khalil. That's, that's what I. That's what I put it. I put a lot. I put the universe and then I put a one. Well, yeah, I put the universe as far as who gives you unalienable rights. And as far as giving some examples, my first example was to breathe, and the second was to travel, third example to pursue happiness, and fourth was inheritance. Or that's fire. Own property. Yep, estate, inheritance. Right. Uh, yeah, because in that Declaration of Independence, it got ancient principles as far as, you know, nature's God. Yeah, that's what it says in the Declaration uh, given to all humans by the Creator, by their Creator. Yep. Right. What's creator. the, What's the government they, built to protect? Right. Did anybody think about, like, right to think, intellectual property? No. Oh. And, uh, it's that in incorporal paradigmas, and that corporal will be the ones you can't touch, but right. The other one would be like, like you say, inner intellectual property, like the music we're putting out, any type of uh, shit. I'm sure at this point, because when it's digested, it's aligned to somebody else, exactly. Uh, the music is literature, too, all right? Yeah. It's on the record, you know what I'm saying? It's published. Right. So if you made if you made an album, go look up the word album. You literally wrote a book. Yep. Yep. Um, let me leave off at 14. 14. What are the three branches of government, sovereign powers, and who has standing at law to exercise them? Legislative, executor, and uh, judicial. Judicial. Indigenous force can exercise them. Free national. Flesh and blood, human beings, sovereign people. So we all, you all have a consensus that legislative, executive, and judicial are the three branches. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Now, yeah. what? What are the function of each? What does the legislative do? The registration. 
uh, that's the Senate in the House. All bills for raising revenue. Senate can propose or concur with amendments as on other bills, lay and collect taxes, borrow money on the credit of the U.S., regulate commerce with foreign nations, declare war. That's legislative. Yeah, so legislative is pretty much like they the writers, you know what I mean? Executors are the ones that's going to execute it, and the judicial are the ones that investigate. Evaluate, yeah. Evaluate, yeah, you know? measure, or judge. Yeah, so legislator mm -hmm. makes the law, like like the Moore said, uh, the legislator makes the law, they're, they're acting mm -hmm. as the de facto L, as far as the United mm -hmm. States is concerned. The executive carries out the law, so they're the de facto bay, as far as the United States is concerned. Right? Dang, that's cold. Thanks. Right. right. And then the judicial evaluates, you know, case law, red judicata, and things like that. So that's still like a de facto, uh, de facto Ali. Ali and a bag and kind of blend. Like, you know what I'm saying? What is legislative again? Legislative is like the L, like the maker makes a law. What was judicial? Interp interpret and adjudicate law. Yeah, he evaluates yeah, law. Evaluated. Yeah. yeah. Case law. Uh, what would they be? If they, are they, what, what kind of de facto is the judicial? Ali. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's like a blend of Bay and Ali. Like kind of. Because based on how they based on how they evaluate it becomes what it is. So it's like that's kind of like an enforcer too. Yeah, that makes sense. Um okay. So 15. What is your status concerning citizenship? Sovereign. North American sovereign. National. Yeah, national is probably better. Right. So what is your status concerning citizenship, right? So it's, what are the classes of citizenship, right? right. National. Right. I love you. National. White. National. Yeah. Be national. What are the other Three classes of citizenship? Alien. Alien. Um, Naturalized. Natural, yeah, naturalist. Where? Right. Yep. Uh, natural, what is? Naturalized. What is, right. Yep. yep. Thanks. Naturalized. Oh, I got it right here. Nobility. Three white person, number two, foreign or national, number three, foreign subject, number four, resident <laughs> alien, number five, non resident alien, six, 14th Amendment, artificial person. Yeah, those are like um, subcategories. Yeah. Uh, you know what I'm saying? But in general, it'll be, you know, national, uh, naturalized, and only the natural. If, if it's a, if it's a republic form, then that the national is doing the naturalizer, not the Fourteenth Amendment de facto feudal system. Like they can't naturalize people. That's what I'm saying. Right. But a republic, you know, if we if once we get bigger and bigger and more organized and more organized, um, we'll start naturalizing people, and they'll be uh, if so more subjects. And then after that, you got like you said, aliens, and then. Um, yeah. Um, okay. So people people who don't have citizenship, what are they considered? Wars. Or who or or who don't have a nationality. Stateless. Of a human, 14th Amendment citizen. Whoever says stateless is on point. Yep. Uh, stateless persons. She got a gold star. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, the good, the good jobs stamp. Yeah. That matriarch. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, sixteen. What is your free national name, and what is the name of our government? American is a free national. First American. Yeah. First nation of North America. 
the Moorish National Republic. So okay. our free national name. Moorish Americans. And then uh MST have made the Morris Holy Science Temple. Free national name? I don't know what I think. Americans. There we go. What is our free national name? Mine is Mafiel. Yes. Oh, man. okay. okay. I see what you're Government. All right. No, no, I like the um you mean something else? Yeah, I meant I meant like okay, like okay, so what's the difference between if I was to ask you what's your appellation and you said Mafiel, and then I said, Okay, what's your free national name? Thank you. More American. What's, I'm what's, what's your net right? What's your nation's name? Not not your appellation, your nation's name. Mm. Al Moroccan. Moroccan. Mm. Okay. Yeah, it's yeah. The difference. Okay. The name of the government. Yeah, I thought it was American. Um, I understand, Morris American. I mean, to be more precise, <laughs> it is American, but Al Moroccan is the precise term. Al Moroccan. Yeah, because mm -hmm. when you put the Al in front, you're saying from, like from Morocco. You know and it, separ it separates us from the false claim of American. Because remember, um, like I said, Noble Jew Ali came on the scene and woke us up. But if you talk about, you know, Moorish American is a new for designation for the 1920s. Prior to that, that term wasn't, you know what I'm saying? So right. now Moroccan is more ancient. You know, right. this in, you know, right. period, right? you know what I mean? Now, you know, no need to go too in depth in that. It's pretty uh, straightforward. Um, so what is the name of our government? I put the Moorish National Republic. That's correct as well. But what's the main name of our government, though? The Moorish Science Temple. Of North America. Or the MSPA. Nope. El Moroccan Empire. Exactly. The El Moroccan Empire. That Moroccan Empire. That's a government, is it not? Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Moroccan he was, Empire. If you was to say if you was to say the Roman Empire, everybody everybody would be like, oh yeah, that's a government. Yeah. Nice. Um, so let me transition to the adept test. Did anybody get a chance to do the add up joint or are we going over it together? No, nah, I didn't get a chance to do it. Uh, everybody can see the screen? Yeah. 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 Okay. What is your status concerning citizenship? Pre national. 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 Okay. National. Okay. What is your status concerning property of any kind? Allodio. Allodio title. Allodio. Allodium. Okay. What are the three branches of government and briefly explain the duty of each branch? We just went over that. Legislative, yeah. executive, judicial. Legislative is writers, executives carry out the law. Judicial, evaluate the law. Okay. Number four. What article of the Constitution for the United States of America, 1787, supersedes the Constitution itself? And what clause specifically? And what is what is the clause known as in law? Supremacy clause, Article 6. Uh, oh, we got some intelligent boys in here. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Who got the clause? Yeah, we have a clause. Uh, yeah, I think the clause was a supremacy clause. But that, what you mean, what it is, what it's saying? Like what's no, what, right, like one, two, three, four, five. Oh, it's, uh, damn, hold on. What is V and I? I don't, I don't really know Roman numbers, though. The V and I. That's, that's it. 
that's is that six? Yeah, yeah, that's it. Article six. No, no, no. Is it? Yeah. Article six, section what? It's two sections or two clauses, clause one and two. Hmm. Let me think. Let me think. Section one. All right, so it's clause two. So article six, clause two. The other one's like liberty or something. Article six, clause two. Got it. Yep, clause two. Yep. So now, what is clause two? Any any uh, any treaties made shall be the supreme law of the land. Is that that the clause you talking about? Yes. It's pursuant, yeah, for sure. Shall be under the authority. Shall be the supreme law of the land. And judges in every state shall be bind by it. Right. Because remember when we went to court in uh, Ventura, he was, I was reading like, you know, basically Article 6 and that it supersedes any uh, rules of court for Ventura, right? And he, he was reading, he was reading through it. And then he hit, um, in, certain, in certain exceptions, the supremacy clause. And I was like, yeah, that's what I'm talking about, Article 6. That's what I've been telling you the whole time. He was like, we're going in circles here. <laughs> uh, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> Playing games, man. Yeah, that shit's crazy. Uh, okay, so we clear on that. Um, number four, what article of the Constitution? No, we just read that. Article, I mean, number five, what is stare decisis? The legal doctrine of being bound by precedent and precedents. Yeah, precedents. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, and everybody know what precedence is? That a court of law must follow no. the set in previous cases with similar, you know, circumstances. Okay, so I heard somebody say no. So, um, a thing decided. Now, Stand by so, so we're talking about law or case law. Case law decided. Um, you know, stare decisis. Decision decision. Be decision or think of it like decided. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, so case law, anything, that's when we all, when we, when we discussed previously in Article 4, Section 1 of the Constitution dealing with full faith and credit on uh, judicial decisions, uh, mm -hmm. applications of a state, right? Uh, public acts of the state, rather. That's where, that's where this comes in. You you hook case law to Article 4, Section 1. Uh, especially yep. if you already know that, that's pretty, you know what I'm saying? It's a time to, to ensure cognitivity and uniformity in the law. Now, so, now, uh, number six, what stare decisive states that because now we know it's decisive. So basically, essentially, it's saying what case law states that federal law and Supreme Court cases apply to state courts. But what case law states that? Not necessarily sure. I can't remember the article, but I know that it talks about how the Supreme Court basically make a decision. Now, other courts basically have to um, fall under the, the national jurisdiction of the Supreme Court, or something like that. Okay, no, so no, just state, just state the case law. Just state the case law, yeah. That, that, the that. name of the case law. Who, who versus who? Yeah. Rock versus Pennsylvania? So I'm gonna, so I'm gonna, okay, I'm gonna get, just get two more chances. Somebody just get, you know, say something or how they feel, or give, you know, and then um, I'll go into it. Um. You said state the case law between the uh, what case law states that federal law and Supreme Court cases apply to state court cases. What case? What case was that? Whoopty woo versus whoopty woo. I felt that shit too, and it was like something, something mixed well and. Something. Yeah, if y'all if y'all been studying RV Bay, you'll know you run right into it. Yeah, well, we just made that shit. Oh. Okay, so, so the case law is Howlett versus Rose. A Supreme Court case in 1990. So Howlett, H O W L E T T versus Rose, R O S E, comma, 496, and then space U dot S dot, and then um, 1990 in the, in the parentheses, 1990s case. 
So that in that case, it states that federal law and Supreme Court cases apply to state courts. Uh, other cases that are in that vein, and I'm just going to say this, like I said, it's on the record so we can always play this back. Uh, David versus Wetzler, U.S. case, a U.S. Supreme Court case. Stromberg versus California, another U.S. Supreme Court case as well. Um, so why is this important? Why are these, why are these, why is this decisive that these case laws important? It's because how you enforce um, res judicata and everything else using it, because once it's been ruled upon, you basically showing and it's in law, it's already been ruled. Right, stands as law. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's like it's like one, something to do with the legal maxims as well. But, um, okay. Sorry, but decided, there's nothing to talk about. Um, right. But that was number six, though. That was number six. Yeah. Um, so number seven. What their decisive states or what case law to states that failure to identify is not an arrestable offense? And why is that important? Olander versus Lawson. Olander, right? Olander <laughs> versus Lawson. That's what I heard. Yeah. Yeah. Supreme Court ruled a police officer cannot arrest a citizen for refusing to I not identify himself. Okay, so that's correct. It's a um, U.S. Supreme Court case in 1983. Uh, FYI, <laughs> Hellender versus who? Lawson. Lawson. Hollander <laughs> versus Lawson. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Number eight. Well, wait, why is that important? Oh, yeah, why is that important? <clears throat> well, it's, it's important. So, when, you know, when you do get pulled over, you really don't have to identify. Right. You don't Stuff even have to identify. Yeah, because if you haven't if you haven't committed no if you haven't if there's no crime or anything, I mean, there's no probable cause, you have to self-identify because you haven't been committed of anything. You know what I mean? You're not exactly. an exactly you're your natural person. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. And you want to give them as less as less information as possible. And yeah. even if you even if you do give them an appellation, they don't have jurisdiction anywhere. Yeah, and then plus it's just in your 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 privacy, like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't go asking you where, you, where do you live? Because that's basically what you're asking me. Where does your boss live? Right. Like, and, and give me your boss's address. Like, what? Like, <laughs> yeah, what you right. I mean, identification for <laughs> I identify with you. Fuck. Right. I've, I've just real quick through experience, I, I was facing like uh, a policy enforcer, like about to grab me and arrest me. And I actually invoked that and he stepped back. Like, it was like, like magic, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. That's, you know what I'm saying? That's love, but that's the energy too, and just being on it and knowing. Well, yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah. All right. So, number eight, how would you qualify our treaty to distinguish it from the confusion of the Kingdom of Morocco? And what year was it in full force? And how often does it renew? Every 50 years, it renewed. Okay. And I think 1786. So yeah, we renew every 50 years. Okay. Um, so now the next element is how would you qualify our treaty to distinguish it from the confusion of the kingdom of Morocco? Treaty deals with pesos. The date. <laughs> Mexican dollars. You dig? I feel you. Um, yeah, what you say, brother? Okay, we got we, we got because uh, the treaty oh, is dealing with Mexican dollars, signifying that's an America treaty or Al Moroccan treaty, yeah, an Al Moroccan treaty made with the United States here, and then 
uh, the kingdom was established in 1956 over there. And it was only established by the, the quote unquote uh, corporation in the United States. Um, yeah. Right, so how, how do we present our treaty in words without the confusion? Because as oh, soon as you say, as soon as you say, well, Treaty 18, of Morocco between the United States. I guess we would be enforcing the 1836 one, right? And then even though we would still be referring to the uh, 1786 one, but it was still used up most up to date on them. So instead of saying Treaty of Morocco between, between I mean, Treaty a piece of friendship between Morocco and the United States, what would you say? Uh, the Union or, or Empire. Empire, the Moroccan Empire versus, yeah. Yes. You say versus? Oh, yeah. or... <laughs> oh, you heard me wrong? Hey, I, 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 I said that. I was like, I just said that. How are we going to have peace in the versus? Come on, yeah. Yeah, you, know, we got saying, to, you, know, you think we still on Red Judicata, which we is, but in a way, <laughs> still, you know, it's, right. it's a contract. So just, so just now, nah, just real simple, like, okay, so just to qualify, like qualifying, like making it his own character, the Treaty of, of Peace and Friendship between the Moroccan Empire and the United States of North America to qualify which part of America, and then the year was in full force, or in other words, revised, 1836. So the Treaty of Peace and Friendship between the Moroccan Empire and the United States of North America, 1836. That's how we should be presenting it on writs and in proclaiming. Yeah, we gotta get that sort of five copy, man. Wait, 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 wait. Say them dates again. The Treaty of Peace and Friendship between the Moroccan Empire and the United yeah. States of North America, 1836. There we go. Certified copy, Library of Congress, like uh, Mafiel said. Uh, yeah, everybody, everybody need to get that copy. I mean, 1787 is dead. Everybody should know that. Everybody clear on that? Uh, why is it dead? Because of the renewal? Because it was one after that. 50 years. Six. That's, the, yeah, most, that's high. the last one. The first one only lasted 50 years. Right. Okay. Question number nine. What article in our Moroccan treaty solidifies jurisdiction, jurisdiction prima facie or on his face? Article uh, three. What does article three say? Uh, something about either party. Their party. You know, war with any nation. War with any nation. Take a prize, belong to the nation. Uh, and on the board subjects or effects belonging to either of the parties, the subject shall be set at liberty and the effect yep. returned to the mm -hmm. owners. And if any goods belonging to any nation with whom either parties shall be at war, shall be loaded on vessels belonging to the other, other party, they shall pass free and unmolested without any attempt being made to take or detain. So that's the way that was article three of, uh, of what, what the treaty. Right. That sound that sounds like enforcement. But what are what article is dealing with jurisdiction though? I got six. Wait, are we on nine or ten? What? <laughs> wait, what wait? We're on nine. We're on nine. Okay. Um I solidifies jurisdiction thing Um that's not. Not twenty one. Uh, so, so, in other words, what article deals mentions the um our flag as a signal? Oh, should they uh, signal our past? Ain't that Article Four? Or yep, signal a past. Flag state, right? Or a yeah, signal a past shall, shall be given to all vessels belonging to both parties by which they are known. Or they are to be known when they meet at sea, and if the commander of a ship of war of either party shall have other ships under his convoy, the declaration of the commander shall alone be sufficient to exempt any of them from examination. Islam or yeah. right and exact. Right. So when they stop when they stop you on the freeway or whatever or wherever they try to stop you, they operating on maritime. So technically that's the sea, wherever we're at, all over the land. 
Yeah, so like a flag. Oh, the the distinguish from other, you know what I'm saying, humans and nationalities of people. So by Article 4, so that's the answer for that. Okay. Um, number 10, what article in our Moroccan treaty deals with disputes with the other uh, citizens? Article 21. 20. 21. Anybody else? Wait, you on our wait? What number are you on? You're on number 10. If any citizen of the United States should kill or wound a Moor, or on the contrary, if a Moor shall kill or wound a citizen of the United States, the law of the country shall take place and equal justice shall be rendered. The consul will assist him at the trial, and if any delinquent shall make his escape, the consul shall not be answerable for him in any manner, whatever. So that's Article 21. Yeah, Article 20. Wait, so yeah. Wait, which one was signal of pass? Article, article 4. Yeah. That's Article 4. Go ahead, read Article 20. All right. If any citizen of the United States or any okay. person under their protection shall have any disputes with each other, the council shall decide between the parties. And whenever the council shall require any aid or assistance from our government to enforce his decisions, it shall be immediately granted to him. Islam. Article 20. Is it 20 or 21? It's 20. It's 20. Okay. It's both. It's both because the council is involved on um, uh, criminal activity and disputes. All right, so wait, you read number 10, but... So, so Ali and, and Blaze was right. Yeah, I read 21. Yeah, I played 20. So collectively, 20 and 21. Uh, that reminds me of um, the Fourth Amendment and Fifth Amendment collectively dealing with due process, too. That's just a pop out of my mind. Dang. Yeah. That's tight. Yeah, that synchronicity, yeah. Uh, okay, so number 11. What article in our Moroccan treaty deals with criminal activity? So we just answered that question. Uh, I thought that was 21. So, right, well, it's missing both collectively. Yes, for sure. 20 and 21. Uh, number 12. What article secures the right to demand real property and land or ancestral state in effect? Article 24, Amendment 5, uh, Article. Uh, yeah. Hold on, what, what was that again? What was the answer? What article secures your right to demand real property <laughs> and our ancestral state and effects? Oh, yeah, what was the answer? Uh, nobody gave an answer yet. I'm waiting for an answer. What is so far? Nobody knows the answer for that. What article in the treaty speaks on that? Right. Where are we at? 11, 12. Um, the article secures your right to demand real property, land, or ancestral estate. That's Article one, sixteen, and uh, I think it's like ten or sixteen. No, nope. No, I just got it. Uh, it might be in the first, like in the beginning too. So what nope. article secures your right to demand real property, land, and effects? Jeez. That effects, effects jump out to you. What article? Six. There we go. If any more shall bring citizens of the United States or their effects to his majesty, the citizens shall immediately be set at liberty and the effects restored. And in like manner, if any more not subject to the dominion shall make prize of any of the citizens of America or their effects and bring them into any of the ports of his majesty, they shall be immediately released as they will be considered as under his majesty's protection. 
Islam. So what what other article? What's the what's the other article that deals with real property and land or your right to inherit? And right. It talks about ancestors as well. Article 22, right? If any, okay, so Article 22, if any American citizen <laughs> shall die in our country and no will Okay, you're talking about a will here. A will shall appear. The council shall take possession of his effects. And if there shall be no council, the effects shall be deposited in the lands of some person working of trust until the party shall appear who has a right to demand them. But if the heir to the person deceased be present, the property shall be delivered to him without interruptions. And if a will, if a will shall appear, the property shall descend agreeable to that will as soon as the council shall declare the validity thereof. That's fire right there, Article 22. Right. So that's a cold game too, because ancestors set it up to where, all right, if, if more is a sleepy and they not proclaiming, then what does it say on that dollar bill? In God we trust. So until then, everybody's slaves until they stand up and demand their property. Yeah. And they and then it's crazy because they actually given the pale skin right to hold us down like that until, like I said, we stand up. Right. It's a cold game. Yep. Because at the end it says, as soon as the council shall declare the validity thereof. Right. So that means a competent elected official of a of the Republic saying this is what it is. And in our, and another note on that too is in our status and standing, our, our ancestors died interstate. And that word interstate means without a will, but by blood. So mm. that's our standing. Mm. That's heavy. Our will, technically our will is the treaty. Right. Trust indenture. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, okay. So number 13, what article in the Moroccan treaty is in harmony by law with the procedures of habeas corpus? We said it already, but yeah, somebody go through it again. Okay. Yeah, article six. Yep. Res judicata. So I'm just going to read it out loud again. Okay. If any more shall bring citizens of the United States or their effects to his majesty, the citizens shall immediately be set at liberty and the effects restored. And in any like manner, if any more not subject to the dominion shall make prize of any of the citizens of America or their effects and bring them into the ports of his majesty, they shall be immediately released as they will be considered as under his majesty's protection. Well, article yep. article, article six. 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 Correlating to habeas corpus. Does everybody know what habeas corpus is? Dead Kyle. body. No. Cor corpus means body, right? Um, do, so does everybody know the function of a habeas corpus? Like what it is? Oh, uh, the habeas corpus is it's a uh, writ requiring someone to be brought before a court. Islam. Uh, requiring that somebody be released. Yeah. Release the body. Um, you know, based on, or in our case, uh, you know, we have treaties and you know, international law, diversity of citizenship, no injured party. It's a bunch of reasons why, you know, we would be filing the writ. Right. If y'all been, um, you know, looking through the council notification and access manual, then you know, any nine, you know, nine U.S. citizen is deemed foreign national. And on top of that, we got treaties, and then that's going to take you to Article Six, Section Two. Um, so, all them reasons. And then the subject matter would be like unlawful detention or unlawful imprisonment, kidnapping, 
you know, the such. Yeah. Uh, okay. <clears throat> Number 14. What does corpus delecti mean? Dead body. Don't think of it in. You gotta prove the, prove the commission of a crime. Yeah. The evidence that a crime exists. Yep. Um, Material substance. Yeah. The body. There you go. Yep. All right. 15. What is the great insignia of the Moorish nation? The pyramid seal. Yeah. The great seal. It's the great top of the paper. Ab, Ab Antico. The Ab Amicio. Amicio. Where? Ab Antico. Is that how you up? say it? Ab Antico. Top of the paper if you scroll up. T- that's what I'm looking oh, at. Ab Antico. Exactly uh, Ab Antico. What what? Ab Antico. Yeah, it's basically... Um, this expression, like from the ancient, or saying antique, the root word will be antique or antiquity. Right, ancient, so, ancient times, old times. Yeah, from the ancient, basically. Um. So, everybody's saying the Great Seal for that answer. Um, yeah. Now, the way he worded it, and based on the, the, uh, you know, the lessons. You insignia, it could go. I, I, I would say no, actually, the gray seal and then the, the hex alpha. Like, okay, for sure. Yeah, hex alpha for sure. Yeah, below. Alpha, same yeah. thing. Stuff right up below. Yeah, yeah, and you know, both both of them because they you know they're expressing stuff that's some you know synonymous. Um, okay, so number 16. What is the American Constitution of 1791, also known as? What, and what does it consist of? The Act. The Bill of Rights, Ten Amendments. Right. The Bill of Rights and Ten Amendments. So we're saying, so we're saying. Wait, 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 wait what was it? You said the Bill of Rights and the Ten Amendments? It said, I, I think it said, what, what does it consist of? Yeah. Is it Ten Amendments? That the seven articles and the Bill of Rights. Okay, because the Ten Amendments and the Bill of Rights are the same thing. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So right. So we got we got ten Bill of Rights and seven articles, right? Right. And then it is it's kind of crazy though because in school they taught you to say uh, uh, amendments, but by law in the Republican form of government, uh, we're supposed to be saying. Um, first bill of rights, the second bill of rights, the third bill of rights to distinguish it because there's so many other de facto amendments out there. And, right. and that's how and that's how Freemasonic people play with us. They play with us on categories, subject matter. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Preci- preciseness. Thanks. And, and if you're saying it's 10 bill of rights, that means what? What's fraud? Number 11 and beyond, right? Right. right. Yep. 14. But then what is the seven original articles? Well, thir- 13 is not fraud, so let's let's not knock that out. 13, the original 13 with 20 section. Yeah. yeah. So we because like I look at that like we can use it against them, just like the US codes. But yeah, for my studies, like technically it's fraud because it's it's after the 10th Amendment, but it even in in the sense of beginning of the day fraud because it establishes that descendants of our people can't be US citizens, even if you thought you got shipped off a boat, right? The sentence right. after should not be, uh, you know, can't be citizens of the United States. Subject citizens of the United States. Yeah, we can't be citizens of the United States. So we foreign national is off top. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Thanks. Yeah. That's that dress guy. Right. Can, right. can you guys explain what's going on? Hey, what was the other one too, more? Uh, like Thundry's one that we read the, on, the, on the last uh, couple of classes. Uh, Burns or... Uh, it's on YouTube. It's on. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's recorded. It's up there on YouTube. Wait, what did Brother Rodmel say? Oh, can can someone expand on the bill part of Bill of Rights? So it's ten Bill of Rights, and those Bill of Rights 
are essentially amendments. So the First Amendment is the first Bill of Rights, et cetera, right? So like, I mean, like, what is meant by Bill? Because I'm like, a lot of things come to mind when I hear Bill. Um, so after the seven articles, you had like, uh, I guess, extensions, extensions of the seven articles. And um, those are called, they just phrase them, Bill of Rights, you know. Uh, me personally, I don't even know why I phrase it a bill. Right. It's really just it's really just a declaration and it's the people's claim against whoever's claiming to be government. That's it. So like if we was to give them a bill, they was to pay like they give us and they was to carry out that order and they don't have a choice, basically. So but yeah, so basically the contractor. The bill is the right. contract. Like, here's the contract, here's the bill. This is this is what the bill say, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. They're, contract. They're, they're trustees. You know what I'm saying? So in that sense, they got obligations. You know, Word. and it's our duty to know what those obligations are so we can hold them to them. And it's uh, a, it's a, uh, etymology said it's a, a poetic word for a kind of a sort. Damn. Yeah. That's interesting right there. Okay. Yeah, it's nice. Um, so we are pretty much clear on that. Yes. Okay. Um, you good? You good, brother? <laughs> what are the three types of jurisdiction, and why is that important to know? Um, I think it's territorial, personal, subject matter. Wait. Yeah, territorial, oh. personal, and subject matter. Yeah, there you Persona. go. Personum, yeah. Personum, personum, jurisdiction. Territorial, personal jurisdiction, and uh, territorial, personal jurisdiction. What was the other one? Subject matter. Project. Here we go. Subject matter, territorial, and persona. Bing, bing, bing. So why is that important? Subject matter, because they that means uh, basically status, like, you know what I'm saying? We can't get past it because you haven't proven your status. And then, and then uh, jurisdictional. Uh, I think that's what I'm saying. I Anybody else? So, uh, so ba basically what we was looking for, right, was like, uh, so for instance, you got the three types of jurisdictions. Um, like what I was saying before, preciseness, so qualifying it. So let's say I have a, a home and some land, a lodeo right now, and they show up to my house, knock on the door, bang, bang, bang. Hey, wait a minute, you don't have ter territorial jurisdiction or I'm in my car. Hey, wait a minute, you don't have subject matter jurisdiction. You can't ask me where I'm going. Qualify it. Right. Yeah. Yeah, they, yeah, they don't have jurisdiction. They know that. But if you don't if you don't qualify it, they're going to move forward no matter what. Because when, one thing you notice when you interact with them is they always ask you a question first that they demand an answer for. But they play in your position. You're supposed to be doing that and repeating a question until they answer it and move no further. This is all a chessboard game. Any questions on that? Nah, just subject matter, territorial, and um, judicial. Subject Persona. matter, territorial. Persona. Persona. Yeah. Persona, the body. Your person. Okay, so what does Quo Warranto mean? A royal writ. It's a prerogative. To, it's a, a writ to determine by what warrant a person holds office. It's a, a prerogative. Yeah, asking for jurisdiction. Basically, asking who are you. Anybody yeah, else? It's, a, it's a writ uh, requiring the person to whom is directed to show authority that they have for exercising the same right or power. 18. 
Yep. So basically, delegation of authority. How, how do you derive delegation of authority? Right. How do you so how do you have your authority? Where's it derived from? All right, so 19. What is a writ? Written a writ in order. What was that? What's, what is a writ? A written composition. Uh, go ahead, Mother. I'm sorry. A written composition. Yeah. A written, a, written, a written order. She said a written command. A legal document issued by a court, a judicial officer, elected official. And so a writ is a command. Mm -hmm. Now, like like the above one was court warrant, so it'll be writ you know, writ of court warrant, so like you know a command to someone to show them delegation of authority. So a writ thing is simply a command on paper, nonetheless. But um, so next, what is an affidavit? Sworn statement yeah. in writing. It's a written, yes. Yeah. Statement of facts. A written declaration on oath, please. Right, a sworn statement in writing. Yeah. So now you can put a command in written form under under your truth, like you're saying you swear, and that'd be a command on paper, and you're swearing that it's the truth. That's what makes the written affidavit synonymous in a sense, because it's a written affidavit at that point. Um, all right, so number 21, according to the consular notification and access manual, fifth edition, who is, which is the latest edition, who is considered a foreign national? A part of the Moroccan treaty solidifies your right to counsel. So the first question, who is considered a foreign national? Wait, we on 21? Yeah, the last question. Who is not a citizen of the United States and a foreign, you know, and a citizen of a foreign country? Anyone for the United States? Or anybody not a U.S. citizen? Right. Um, okay. So what part of the Moroccan Treaty solidifies your right to counsel? Oh, uh, right to counsel. Was that uh, right, um, is that nine? All right, here. No, no, no. Right to counsel. Is that twenty-three. Article twenty-three. Oh, that was on mute. But yeah, the Article twenty-three. The consuls of the United States of America shall reside in any port of our dominions that they shall think proper and they shall be respected and enjoy all the privileges which the consuls of any other nation enjoy. And if any of the citizens of the United States shall contract any debts or engagements, the consul shall not be in any manner accountable for them unless he shall have given a promise in writing for the payment or fulfilling thereof without which promise in writing no application to him for any redress shall be made. And that was Article 29, 28? 23. 23. 23. <laughs> Ain't no damn Article 28. <laughs> hey, I swear I was carrying <laughs> off the numbers, but yeah, I was carrying all kinds of stuff. You were way like, off the damn, paper. <laughs> I, was looking, I was looking for another page. I was like, no. I didn't. <laughs> it go all the way up to 25, my brother. <laughs> hey, five in the pool. Uh, <laughs> Oh shit. Well, can somebody read Article 21 in this, in this entirety? Any of the yeah. citizens of the United States shall kill or wound a Moor, or on the contrary, if a Moor shall kill or wound a citizen of the United States, the law of the country shall take place and equal justice shall be rendered. The consul assisting at the trial, and if any delinquent shall make his escape, the consul shall not be answerable for him in any manner what, what, whatsoever. So now right. you have another one dealing with counsel, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. In the different functions. But the base, the basis foundation that gives us our right in the first place to all those other articles is Article 20. 
ですね。うんうんそう、so、if um any oh yeah 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 if any so, of the citizens of the United States or any persons under their protection shall have any disputes with each other, the council shall decide between the parties, and whenever the council shall require any aid or assistance from our government, then force his decisions; it shall be immediately granted to him. Right. So, yeah, back to so, the, collectively, you know, twenty and twenty one. Um, and the shit, and the first one. As long as you know the different functions, because it's talk, it's, it's expressing consul in different angles, and all all those three articles we read right now. So you just got to know collectively just how how to say what you're saying at the moment. You know how to express that. Right, whatever situation you're dealing with. Yeah. So on that note, um, if anybody would be um. Interested in neophyte training on Mondays? Um, I know Brother Amo is on board. Um, as far as we know, eight o'clock is the basis. 